One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Arias here. And today I'm just gonna be doing um, a bit of a review video. And um, there's also like a great, um, a great kind of image and kind of chart that a member made as well that I thought I would share. He just kind of messaged me it and uh, asked me if I wanted to go over it. And then I was, I thought it was great. So I, I put it in a video as well. So this is just going to be basically going over some trades process, kind of my thought process, what I was thinking. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So this one, GTEC, this one was earlier in the week. I'll kind of go over my thought process on it why I thought it kind of um, started running, um, what I was kind of thinking during this trade. And basically what I was kind of thinking was, okay, in the morning we got this move from 2.5 to 5. And in weekend mentoring this weekend, someone asked me the question, like how do you know a stock is really overextended in the pre-market? Well, when a stock goes from 2.5 to $5 and like, I don't know, less than Let's, let's give it like five to 10 minutes. Um, I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is really overextended. This really went from like 2.5 to, to five, like this quick. I'm not saying it's not along, but chances are it's probably not along. And so I usually like to stay away from that type of stuff. You notice kind of on view app, I'm sure a lot of people were trying to go long, hoping for this to go higher. But in my opinion, like it's time for gravity to take over. It's time to go a little bit lower. And that's kind of what happened. So, you know, we started going uh, lower and then around, um, this is in my time, so around 8.45, we started kind of bouncing a little bit. And what I was kind of thinking was, you know, okay, uh, you know, we're getting a little bit of a bounce. We're kind of coming back down. Um, I was just going to leave it because unless we started getting over VWAP and kind of getting over 4, I, I really probably wouldn't have touched it. Like, I, I would have wanted to see it kind of test VWAP, see how it kind of reacts around there. I know that already looking kind of to the left, we have this as kind of a resistance, we have this as kind of a resistance. So obviously, you know, these lines, these areas are something that, I mean, for me, I knew that it was going to be pretty, pretty hard to get by because I'm sure that a lot of people were trying to go long kind of under here, hoping for it to go higher. And so, I mean, for me, I just, I just left it alone. You know, I, I left it alone in the morning. And, and so after we kind of opened up, we immediately went kind of straight to VWAP um, and straight to four bucks. And so we were again trying to get over this kind of $4 level. And, um, you know, what, what I kind of liked about this the most and why I kind of took it at 368 was that the fact that how, how much this stock tried to break down and it just couldn't. So basically what I like to do is say to myself, okay, you know, I'm not going to start chasing it at four. We have already just had kind of a major, major move. We're doing a lot of volume. We're really starting to kind of get going here. And uh, the way I like to think of it with broken stocks is that, you know, we need to kind of uh, do enough volume to buy all these bag holders kind of out of their shares, right? Because, I mean, like the broken stock process is more so like, no one really wants to long it. We're not really doing a lot of volume. It's going to be hard to get over these levels, which is completely true. But when we started kind of doing a lot of volume down here, and I mean, we're, we're, we're really going here. And so what I was kind of thinking is that I know this is broken. I know on broken stocks, my odds are definitely lessened. But I was saying to myself, if we could get over four bucks, I'm guessing that a lot of people are going to be kind of stuck short under four bucks, under 350, who are kind of, you know, a little bit early, has, who are kind of like a little bit early, and, you know, people who, who were hoping to kind of be the hero and short for the kind of fade lower. And also, I mean, we probably had a lot of people kind of shorting this bounce in pre-market who are like, okay, I have a good enough average. I'm going to kind of hold for a further fade down to 2.5. So once we kind of got above 3.5 area, I was like, okay, you know, we probably have some shorts trapped at least underneath 4, 3.5, and at least underneath 4. Sorry, I'm kind of mixing up my words. I don't know what's going on. But um, so anyway, I noticed that the stock like couldn't really 
uh, break down, it was having trouble, uh, 3.5 was kind of acting as a level, the top kind of here was kind of acting as a level, so I took some and I was like, okay, I'll just risk underneath 3.5, right? And we start going up, we immediately break over four, and those are the trades that I like the most. And the reason why I like it the most is because I'm in the money right away. I mean, it wasn't even two minutes and I'm kind of, you know, I'm green, right? So that's something that I really like as well. We get over, we get a strong push all the way up to kind of these levels up here. And I just said, you know what, we're doing so much volume now that I'm going to leave it alone for a little bit. I'm going to let it kind of run. I'm going to let it, you know, kind of do its course. I saw this candle. It didn't really bug me because I said to myself, if we stuff up here, then I'll, I'll probably take it off. Um, once we got above five, I wanted to take it off right away. Um, people were bidding at five. You know, I just kind of sold into their kind of bids and that was it. We ended up going to 557. But for me, I just wanted to take it off because my original plan like my original plan was not for this to really kind of happen. My original plan was like, maybe we could get up to the top of the range. Maybe we could get up here. I'm going to kind of watch the action as it kind of gets a little bit higher. I have my lines drawn out. I know what I want to do. And so what I really think happened here is that I think that we did probably have a lot of people short under three, five. Um, we probably had a lot of people short under, under, under four for sure. We had a lot of people short under four for sure under kind of this level, probably, and so as we kind of started to creep up, they all started kind of covering on each other. They were all kind of trapped and, you know, we ended up kind of getting that move. So that's kind of my thought process behind it. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. You know, and, and listen, what I'm doing up here is I'm not trying to chase strength. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I want to see like, okay, like give me some pullback. I want the stock to kind of show me like I want it to show me that it's having trouble going lower. And, you know, I needed kind of some evidence for that, right? And so this candle, when we couldn't go lower, when we kind of should have kind of gone lower, that's when I was like, okay, now I can kind of take some and we can probably move up again. Because remember, there's probably a lot of people who weren't even watching this in the morning who finally see it at four and are like, bye, 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 right into this kind of four resistance level, which I really don't feel comfortable buying into. And, you know, so we pull back and every single kind of uptrend is always going to have some type of pullback. It may be big, it may be small, but it's always going to have some type of pullback. So that's what kind of keeps me from chasing. And I also am completely okay with missing a move like this if I can't get an ideal entry early, because I would rather get, uh, you know, nine ideal entries and one stop loss than have like maybe, uh, you know, one entry that really wasn't ideal and nine kind of stop losses. So I what I really like to do is I really like it to show me that like, okay, we've kind of pulled back. We have showed that we can kind of hold uh, three, five, and now let's try for a little bit higher. And that was kind of my thought process uh, in this one. Um, uh, WISA, I believe I made uh, two trades on this. I made, I made kind of like one in the morning that I posted, but I kind of, I forgot to kind of add it. Um, so this one I got in at kind of 316, got out at 370. And here's my process on this one. Because I do believe that I did trade this in the morning um, for this kind of spike. So I, I may have only added one trade by mistake, but I'll, I'll go over this trade instead and, um, you know, I'll, I'll see what, what kind of um, happened. So anyway, uh, my thought process on this one was, okay, we're getting kind of into zombie times. We've had this conference call and and a lot of the times what has been happening is that these stocks are doing these conference calls and they're kind of trapping longs and then they're they're going way lower. But in this scenario, what I kind of noticed was, you know, I, I didn't want to be long before the conference call because like to me, that's kind of gambling. So what I'm thinking is, all right, when this conference call is going on, I mean, there's either going to be some extremely good news and the stock just shoots way up. There's going to be some type of extremely bad news that they had a bad quarter or that a product failed or that they couldn't get what they kind of wanted, or it's going to kind of be neutral and maybe start to grind higher. And so what, what happened when this conference call started? Okay. So obviously we got this kind of pop. I'm sure there were people who were like, 
you know, gambling who are saying like, okay, hopefully they have good news and we can go way higher. We end up kind of pulling back to three. And in my opinion, down there at three, um, like I wasn't going to buy it because the conference call was kind of still going on. So for me to buy this at three would be a gamble as well, because I would kind of be hoping that they say something good and, and I don't ever want to hope. So, um, you know, uh, as they're kind of finishing up, I noticed that we started to kind of grind higher. And at, what what am I kind of thinking in this in this scenario? Well, what I'm thinking is that all right, we probably trapped some shorts down here under VWAP, and and like judging by this whole kind of chart, I'm gonna go ahead and say the average short price is probably under 320, and even maybe under three. So as we're starting to kind of grind higher, I believe I took some kind of in around here. I let it kind of spike up to 3-4 and kind of come back. You know, this is one that I was saying to myself, okay, in order for us to really squeeze short sellers out, we're going to need to really, really go para. And on these ones that kind of grind, a lot of people ask me on the grinders, like, how do you stay so patient? How do you know that this is kind of the, you know, the, the one? How do you how do you know that, that this is even going to go para? And I mean, I don't, but... I just know from my experience that the stocks that tend to grind and grind and grind and grind are the ones where we probably have a lot of people who are stuck short, and then once they start kind of covering on top of each other, the play is done. And so for me, I was just saying to myself, okay, um, you know, I was looking for this kind of move higher. We got it. I was out at 3.7, and that was kind of it. But, I mean, this this is kind of giving me evidence. It's kind of showing me that, okay... Like we got down under three and we kind of came back up. We came back up again. Um, we start grinding. We start grinding. We probably trap more shorts here. We start to go up para and then that was that was really it. And I mean, this isn't really para, but you know, you get what I mean where like I want it to start kind of going in the in the upwards direction, not just in, in one candle or not just because if it's in one candle, it's kind of manipulated. I want to see a couple candles. I want to see it kind of get stronger. And that was kind of my thought process on it. And so thanks guys for watching. Um, I'll be back next week with another one as well. Uh, hopefully we have a great week this week and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully we just keep grinding, getting better every single day. Don't, uh, don't hesitate to, to kind of message. And thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.